Good guy, that Mike Garofalo. Let's welcome in NFL Network's Mike Garofalo with more on the NFL trade deadline. And Mike, let's begin with Chase Young, second overall pick in the 2020 draft. Yeah. He's going to the Niners to pair with 2019 second overall pick Nick Bosa. Now, this only took a third round compensatory pick. This is basically a free trade for the Niners, Mike. What do you think about this one? <laughs> It's not so much free as it is using the draft capital that they've received over the last couple of years for developing a number of minority head coaching and general manager candidates, Rand Carthon and D'Amico Ryans uh, being the, the, the latest amongst those, the Titans general manager and the Texans head coach. You receive third round picks, basically, if you get minority hires uh, away from your organization. So they used one of those and turned it into Chase Young. And this is a 49ers defense that just has not been sacking the quarterback the way that they're used to, they're middle of the pack, 18 sacks this year. Nick Bosa admitting that his holdout probably contributed to his slow start this year. So at some point you would think that he would pick it up. Uh, but to add Chase Young, a guy that Bosa is familiar with, played with him at Ohio State, gives them uh, that impact up front. Plus it gives them the chance to lock him up to a long-term deal moving forward. It seems like that's nowhere agreed to right now. This was basically a trade for this season and then we'll see what happens but certainly having him in the building gives the Niners a chance to lock him up for the long haul if they so choose but at the very least uh, it's a player with tremendous upside maybe hasn't capitalized on that but a tremendous upside tremendous ability and I do know that some teams once this was about to go down I told them I said I think Chase Young is about to get moved somewhere for a third round pick some of them couldn't believe it but some of those teams were let's say in the division with the Washington Commanders <laughs> and they weren't going to be able to get uh, Chase Young off of Washington. Love it, Mike. You're always dialed in. All right. Well, we know, of course, commanders were very busy <laughs> Tuesday. Also shipping out Montez Sweat to Chicago, getting that second round yeah. pick in return. So what was the thinking there for Chicago to trade for an expiring contract? Well, Chicago is saying we've got right now the second and third overall pick in the draft. So you figure you're going to use one of those picks, let's say maybe for a quarterback, and then the other one, get a team to come up and trade down. So we're going to be able to recoup the draft capital that we gave up to trade for Montez Sweat, which it's going to be a high second round pick, but this was done with the intention of locking Swift up or Sweat up, excuse me, to a long term deal uh, to give themselves an impact player on the front of that defense. And so I, I like the way that Ryan Poles, the general manager for the Bears, is thinking, saying we're going to be able to get this pick back some way, somehow. This gives us a chance, kind of like I said with Chase Young, uh, the first right of refusal. Let's say we can't get a deal done with Sweat before free agency. We can franchise tag him and make sure that he remains a Chicago Bear. So the Bears badly looking for edge rusher help, a guy that can have an impact on the edge, and they believe they've got one in Montez Sweat, and not just for the 23 season, but for the long haul. All right, let's go to Minnesota now because we know the Vikings have won three straight. They did yeah. lose their quarterback last week. So to help replace Kirk Cousins, Mike, Minnesota traded for Josh Dobbs. Do we know if there were any yeah. other quarterbacks in this search? What are you hearing? What I'm hearing is what the Vikings know, which I, I believe I talked about this with Jay. It's so hard when you trade a quarterback in the middle of the season because it's hard for him to learn the playbook. It's hard for him to get that rhythm down with his wide receivers. Josh Dobbs has done this now multiple times. He did it with Tennessee last year. He signed on uh, December 21st and he started for them on the 29th. So he played well. He showed how he can do that quickly. He also did it with the Cardinals, even though there was some familiarity already with the coaching staff uh, by coming in so late uh, in the summer and then being able to start for them and play well early in the season. Now, he didn't play well uh, the last month or so, and the Cardinals said, look, we're going to make a move uh, toward Clayton Toon while we wait for Kyler Murray to come back. I do expect Murray to start against the Falcons in a game at home in front of the home fans. That should be uh, his return. Uh, but Josh Dobbs gives the Vikings at least a guy uh, that can compete right now or maybe be ready in case they need to turn it over to him. Kevin O'Connell, the uh, Vikings head coach, saying, hey, he may be ready to play as soon as this week. We shall see. He's done it before. Okay, so, Mike, you mentioned it right there. The status of Kyler Murray might not play this weekend, but he is expected to be back in action yeah. sometime soon. He is going to be back sometime soon, and it's going to be almost a, a second season for the Cardinals as they try to get a lift on the back half of 2023 and get ready for 2024 and have Kyler Murray do some things that makes him feel good about this regime, makes the uh, teammates feel good about Kyler Murray being back to his normal self. I'm told in practice uh, the ball's been coming out of his hand uh, really well. Jonathan Gannon, the head coach, has said that. But I'm also told when the play has broken down and he's had to run, 
he's running away from guys like he normally does. And there's been some oohs and ahs from the teammates. So Kyler Murray, yes, we understand that the Vikings aren't, or excuse me, the Cardinals aren't going to make the, the playoffs this year. But Kyler Murray coming back could give this team a lift and give them some kind of a jolt that could potentially carry over into 2024. That's what the Cardinals are looking for right now. Okay, Mike Garofalo dialed in. As always, appreciate the time and love the Halloween artwork behind you. Nice touch there. <laughs> you got it. You got it, Lindsay. All right, and looking ahead, here's a look at the odds for your Thursday nighter between the Titans and Steelers, courtesy of FanDuel. Pittsburgh, a three-point favorite, just the second time all season. Pittsburgh has been a favorite. The total for this game is 36 and a half points, and pregame coverage beginning 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on TSN.